Hey folks, this is Gray here, and today we're going to be talking about the Delta II Max by EcoFlow, which is a monstrosity of a powerhouse coming in at 2400 watts, and one of the lightest units uh, at that watt range that I've come across uh, since I've been doing reviews on portable power stations. So in this video, we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to look at the specifications of the Delta II Max. We'll look at the inputs on the front. We will look at the screen itself. We will also take a look at the side ports, which is for additional batteries, as well as other accessories. And then we'll take a look at the back, where you would plug in some of your 120 volt accessories and other options as well. Uh, let's kind of go over some of the specifications real quick. This is a 2048 watt hour device. Again, it's 2400 watts. Um, and this has a peak of, I think, of 4800 watts, if I correct. Yes, I am. That being said, it also has a specialized technology called X-Boost. So what X-Boost is, is a proprietary technology by EcoFlow that pushes the unit to about 3400 watts, which can power about 99% of your appliances in your home. You can also connect the Delta II Max to a transfer switch to create a 120 volt backup power solution to your home. One of the things that I really like about the Delta II Max is expandability. You can go from basically 2 kilowatt hours all the way to 6000 kilowatt hours uh, with the expandable batteries. You can add two batteries uh, to this unit. One of the neatest features is a lot of people always ask, how fast does it take to charge this unit? The Delta II Max has one of the world's fastest charging capabilities. The way this is done is by combining your wall outlet and dual solar charging. And in regards to cycles, some people have asked me in the past, uh, how many cycles does this unit can handle? And it's roughly about 3,000 cycles. So that means if you discharge a unit and then recharge a unit, that equals one cycle. On average, for someone that uses it on a, like a backup basis, you can probably get about 10 years out of a unit like this. Now, some folks have asked me, hey, do you actually use these things in everyday life? And I'm going to show you a couple of quick clips here where that I do. So even in here, I use one on my freezer that's in the garage, which is my deep freezer. I also use one for my refrigerator that's above uh, my main refrigerator uh, in the home. Uh, second one, I use it in my office as well for backup to the Wi-Fi computer and all the electronics in there. And then I also have another unit stationed on top of a shelf that I use to charge small electronics uh, from flashlights, lamps, and stuff like that. Uh, most of these units have an uninterruptible power supply, just like the Delta Max 2. And uh, so just to kind of give you an idea that, that these things do come in handy, especially in a place like Florida, where there's constant brownouts and power outages and whatnot. And believe it or not, folks, today I literally dealt with four power outages back to back uh, just by waking up this morning and knowing that the fan shut off. And I was like, OK. And I do have another unit in my room as a backup station uh, that's not technically plugged into anything. It's just in there so that I have reliable, fast access to for power because for me, having a fan and a cool environment to sleep is key. Let's kind of take a close up look at some of the inputs and the outputs, what you get in the box, as well as how the unit looks. And then what we're also gonna do is we're gonna test the unit. Just like we did the uh, original Delta II, uh, we're gonna put a heater on this. We're gonna put some hot plates on this. Uh, possibly, let's say we might be able to use, I think I have uh, an air conditioner that I can plug into it as well. We're gonna see how well it does uh, just running off its battery. We're also going to plug it in and see how it charges. I can't do solar because, believe it or not, it's pouring rain outside, so I won't be able to do that. And also, we'll push it as far as we can to see if we can get the unit to go into overload protection. And then we'll round up with me wrapping up on my final thoughts on this video, as well as asking you, my viewers, a couple of questions. So stay tuned for that. All right, so let's see what you get in the box when you purchase the Delta II Max. And you're going to get the EcoFlow... Uh, Delta II Max Quick Start Guide. Uh, kind of gives you an idea how to set everything up very fast and efficiently. Uh, also talks about the app because I always talk about the app because the app is phenomenal. I give EcoFlow that as a credit. Their app is really easy to use. You're going to get the full uh, breakdown. Uh, basically gives you all the information of the unit itself. Uh, if you can see on there some warnings, all the different specifications in there. You can screenshot that. Uh, if you have any questions or anything that I might go over, but right here, I wanted to just bring your attention to one thing, which is the X boost output power, which I was telling you about uh, in the uh, early part of this video, 3,400 watts. To me, that is very impressive. But all in all, like I said, it comes in multiple languages and whatnot. Uh, tells you all about the car inputs and all that stuff like that. 
uh, but there's a lot of great information in, uh, in here. A lot of people don't pay attention to these, uh, but also your warranty card, folks. Uh, if you buy one of these, you want to make sure that you sign up for the, the warranty because it's very, very important that you follow these instructions so that your unit is covered. Also, you'll get the AC cord uh, that comes with the unit. So that's one part of it. You're also going to get your car adapter cord for the unit itself. And you're also going to get a DC to DC cord uh, in this unit. So you're going to get these three cords as well when you purchase the unit. All right, so let's kind of take a quick spin around of the unit itself here. Uh, this is the front, or well, kind of like the side there. Spin it around there. That's going to be where your screen's going to be at right there. You can see all, and also your uh, quick charge uh, inputs and whatnot. Uh, also on the side here is where we're going to be talking about the extra battery ports. Uh, and I've seen that you can use this for additional accessories as well. Uh, you have your fans here. And this is going to be your, your main area. At least this is where I focus on a lot. Uh, you can see inside here. Uh, these are going to be your inputs right here. These are going to be your AC outputs, of course. And you have a couple of DC outputs here. Um, but first, let's kind of go over the front of the screen uh, on this unit itself. Now, I'm going to try to get a little closer with this so that you guys can get a nice view of that screen there. And uh, basically, actually, I guess I can show you uh, down here but real quick. I can scroll this down because this is going to be your power button. And the reason I'm showing this is I had someone in a previous video ask me if like the another unit that I reviewed had a power button. So this unit actually does have a power button. So when I push this power button, it will shut the unit down, of course. And then when I push that power button back, it's going to turn that unit back on. So I wanted to show that real quick. And I guess we can kind of focus in on, since we're right here, let's move this to a different position. Right about there looks good. Is the USB inputs here. Now you can see here you have two USB-A's. You have two fast chargers. You have a USB-C 100 on this side and a USB-C 100 on this side. All right, so let's take a quick look at the screen itself. And luckily I, I got it so it doesn't really flicker too much, but you can see where I have the AC turned on. That's gonna be my Wi-Fi. And what I really like about this is the input and the output. Of course, this is the percentage of battery that's full. This is how many hours that I have running at nothing. I asked EcoFlow about this in case someone happens to mention it in the comments. This is specifically, this icon is specifically made for the folks that got these to do reviews on. Let's kind of flip this thing around and take a look at the side here. Now both of these here, I'm going to open both of them at the same time. These are for your additional batteries. Like I said, you can go from 2 kilowatt hours to 6, six kilowatt hours, which is tripling the capacity of a unit like this. Uh, and the way they stack is very, very nice. Maybe I will find a picture and I'll throw it up on the screen for you. But those are the two connection ports for your additional batteries. Uh, they connect very easily. Uh, I don't have any additional batteries. I'm probably going to have to purchase them myself uh, because I would like to use this unit for one of the, like this. I mean, six, six kilowatts, folks. I can use that for, for dang near anything. Of course, you have your exhaust ports on your fans. Um, and I think on the other side, it has, uh, so one of them is usually an input, one's usually an output. All right, so real quick, this is going to be your inputs here. All right, and these are your, like your Anderson connectors right here. I'm pretty sure that's a technical term. If I get it wrong, let me know down in the comments. Uh, but you can see that there, that you have two of those, and that's where I'm going to connect my solar panels to, where you'd connect, if you buy the bundle, you'll get uh, 220 watt solar panels, and you would connect both of those to that. Uh, which I like the fact that you can connect two to that so you can get max charging. Of course, this is going to be your AC input uh, for your standard, you know, cord. And then right here is going to be a reset switch. But also, this is also going to, I wonder if I can get a light in there, but this is going to connect your fast charging. And I just can't angle that up enough, but you can regulate the charging uh, through that or the app by using the switch here. Uh, that can control how fast you want the unit to charge if you want to use it super fast charging or not. I love it that you have six of them, six inputs, because, okay, the, the original Delta II, uh, which I love and I'm using, it only has two of these three prong, and then the rest are just two prong, so it doesn't have the grounding. So that creates an issue for me because it only gives me two options to connect a freezer and some other three prong outlet. This is going to give me a huge amount of expandability uh, 
especially connecting major appliances. Your DC down here, which is you're going to be your standard port here if I can get this thing open. I love that they are pretty, they're not really easy, they're not super flimsy, but of course you're going to have your cigarette adapter. You also have your DC, which I, God, I can't remember the names, the barrel connectors. I think they're like 55, C, I don't know. They, they have some sort of technical term, but I don't think that really too many people care about that. It's a DC output connectors. And of course, you're going to turn this thing on. You're just going to push that button uh, and you could turn it off the same way. But I wanted to show you something when I turn that on. Let me go ahead and put this back in here. And I spin the unit around and bring this back up so that you guys can see the screen as I bring her around. That you're going to notice uh, another port that's been activated. So that you know that your DC is there. And now they have lots of different things on here when it goes in overload protection and other things that happen. There's a lot of other things on here that will pop up. All right, so let's kind of do uh, move on to uh, charging, but I guess I could plug it in real quick if you guys want to see the fast charging really fast uh, of just using the AC outlet itself. All right, so I just went ahead and plugged it in. I wanted to catch it so that you guys can see how it amps up on there. As you can see, the input is slowly going up. And we're going to kind of just ponder it for a second and see where it goes. But I, I, do, I just want to stop talking for a minute see that you can hear nothing other than the thunder outside and me rambling on very quiet now what I want to do to show you is that switch we were talking about I'm gonna go ahead and move this switch over bring this back around and now you can see now it's going up that's giving that that supercharge or turbocharge, whatever the term is used. So as you can see, how that changes the whole ball game in regards to charging the unit. Now I'm gonna quiet down real again real quick so you can hear it. Can you hear those fans kick on? And those fans are like, like I said here, you can feel the output there, and that's drawing in from this side. But we're up to 1613 14 watts of input to charge the unit so that's super fast then again when you add the solar to the unit uh it's going to kick that up into high gear so you're going to have this thing charged in no time right now i think it says i'll have the full i'll have the unit charged in 21 minutes at this rate now if i was to add the solar panels on this that would probably cut that even lower it'd probably be about you know 14 minutes or less to go from 85 percent to 100. All right, so enough of that. Let's go ahead and do some testing on this unit and see how well this unit does uh, in a specific situations because the reason I like to test a heater, hot plates, stuff like air conditioners and those type of gears, your deep freezers, is because this is what we're going to be using the unit for, for emergencies. A lot of us don't, you know, haul around something that's large for camping. Uh, some folks do who do the overlanding, uh, who have RVs, this is a great fit for them as well. But for us in the emergency preparedness side of things, uh, a lot of us use these in the home uh, as a power backup supply system uh, to make sure our food doesn't spoil uh, and that we have lights uh, and ways to charge our electronics and keep things running so that we have a bit of normalcy in our lives uh, when the power goes out. Okay, so I, what I went ahead and did is plug the unit in uh, to the wall outlet right now. As you can see, it's back up to charging. I think it's at 1700 uh, right now. That's directly to the AC outlet on the wall uh, right over there. And we're going to go ahead and plug in the freezer first uh, and see what it draws for the output. Okay, so now we have just the freezer plugged in. The compressor is on and it's pulling 77, 78 watts. Looks like it's fluctuating a little bit. That's with the compressor on. Once the deep freezer reaches temp, it pulls little to no energy at all. It's 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 pretty impressive uh, of the unit I have. And the unit uh, that we have is an eight cubic feet deep freezer uh, that I got uh, here, and it's by Hot Point. I, the reason I'm mentioning it is folks keep on asking in certain videos about what I got using and what specifics or some of the stuff that I'm testing out on here. But that's what we're drawing currently from the freezer. Now I have it plugged into the wall, so it's charging. So it's saying, you know, it's giving me an of the idea how this is all going to run corresponding to the way it's all set up. 
but right now it's only charging me. It's going to be fully charged in 10 minutes. Now, I guess what some people want to see is the, the uninterrupted power supply, or the UPS system. So when I go to unplug this, if I pan over here, if I unplug the unit itself real fast, but I want to keep it on the screen because I'm going to go ahead and unplug it and you'll see it'll stop charging. Now we have zero input. So it stopped charging. You can see the fan is running currently. Still drawing about 64 or 63 watts from the freezer as it's starting to cool down as the compressor brings the, the deep freezer to temp. And at where we're sitting at right now, the unit is telling me we're going to be at 21 hours and you'll see this slowly tick up as this ticks down. That's just with this unit all alone, no additional batteries or any of that fun stuff like that. Just to kind of give you an idea. And you notice this didn't flicker. The, the freezer stayed on. So it's milliseconds, milliseconds if you lose power that this uh, takes control of everything that's going on. So that's just to kind of give you an idea of how the unit itself works. Now, uh, let's plug in a couple of other different things. Most of the time when I use the unit like this down here, this thing here, it always shuts down most of the units that I try on it. So I haven't used it in quite some time because usually uh, it will kick off most of the portable power stations and send them into protect mode. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug the freezer and use the AC first just to see how this unit handles it. So to do this first test, just to be fair, I plugged the, the unit's plugged in into the wall so it's using its AC outlet and it's also, you can see there's a green light on the AC unit itself. I'm going to flip this around so that you can see that there's nothing running on the output. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to turn the AC on. Let's see what happens. And my apologies for the noise, but we're at 190. The unit hasn't kicked on yet, or the compressor hasn't kicked on yet, so we're going to see a big spike once that happens. 900. As you can see, the unit is keeping pace with the compressor. The compressor is pulling 850 some watts out of the unit. The unit is being inputted here at 1500. Now, some of you folks are going to say, well, Gray, unplug the unit from the wall. How will it do at that point? Because if there's no power, will this thing run this unit? So let's give that a shot. I'm just going to go ahead and pull the power plug out the wall. And you'll see the input drop down tremendously. And listen for the AC if you notice a difference in the, in the fan. So you heard that? Everything stopped. As you can see, I have, it says an overload. So maybe I should have unplugged it that way. But the unit resolved that issue very fast. The AC is kicked back on. Remember, this is a high drain machine or high drain appliance, AC per se. But the unit resolved the issue from the overload all by itself. All by itself. Kicked everything back on. And now we're back at the AC. Now I want to see when it kicks on the compressor how that's going to work. All right, folks. So as you can see, the compressor is kicked on. It's pulling about 900, almost 1,000 watts. See how hard that dropped down when the compressor kicks on? So with the, if the compressor ran continuously, I would only get that. But once the compressor kicks off, it drops down tremendously when it reaches temp for the room. But I'll give this thing credit it's had zero issues in the aspect of running the AC, something that I've always had issues with, with every other unit. So this is great. And I'm assuming the compressor is going to kick off here in a second, because usually it just runs for a few minutes. It finds temp. I see it's about 1,100 watts there. And everything is looking good. All right, so the compressor just kicked off. And we're down, back down to 179 watts of continuous power. 
I'm, I'm, you know, honestly, I'm, I'm thoroughly happy with the performance of the Delta Max. I'm going to go ahead and turn this thing off. So just if you have it plugged into the wall and you're running it and using it as a backup, you definitely get a lot more out of it or if you have the additional batteries. Kind of gives you an idea of running an AC, especially for you folks that suffer in a heat prone area like Florida. When a hurricane comes and shuts your power off for days, weeks, or months at a time, how something like this could be very important uh, for you being comfortable, especially some people don't deal with heat very well. All right, so that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and let's try to see if we can get the unit to fail. And what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and plug in those two things over there, which between the two of them, between 1800, that's 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, uh, should be about 33 to 3400 watts it's going to pull from this machine here. So let's go ahead and plug in these units and see if we can get the unit to fail. Uh, if we can't get the unit to fail with the hot plate and the heater, we'll throw on the AC and that should definitely push it beyond its capability. All right, so I have everything plugged in. You can see the power's on the, on the heater. The power is on on the uh, hot plate, as well as the AC is still plugged in. We'll spin that around. You can see I got everything plugged into the unit right there. So now, let's have some fun. Set this down here so that you guys can watch this. First, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on the heater. I'm gonna turn the heater on high, as high as it goes, and we'll see how well the Delta Max 2 handles it. So here goes nothing. First is the fan. I wanna see if it's gonna draw anything. Man, it's not drawing much of anything. That's, that's ironic that the fan is not pulling any power at all. So let's go ahead and move this, turn this heater on. I'm turning the heater to max. So as you can see there, it's pulling, it pulled about 1100 right off rip. I'm going to turn the heater on to high now. So we should shut 1400 watts, 1500 watts. So that's almost, that's beyond, it's, uh, this is a 2400 watt unit. So it's using 1000 watts under what it's uh, rated at roughly. Now, one thing I want to pause here real quick, I do want to plug the unit in uh, because I want to see how the unit fails while the unit's plugged into an AC outlet. I don't think it's fair enough for me to push the battery that hard because uh, once I plug everything in, it's going to drain the battery extremely fast. So I want to plug it in uh, and then bring it up to failure. Okay, so what I did is I went ahead and plugged the unit in. As you can see, the unit is trying to keep pace with the heater. So it's trying to outdo the heater by pushing in almost 1,700 watts right there, input, and almost 1,400 watts is what the heater is pulling. Now we're going to go ahead and turn on the hot plate. All right, I'm going to turn on one hot plate first on high, and then we're going to turn on the second hot plate. Here goes nothing. That's one. Let's see what we get. We're at 2,000. All right, let's turn on the other secondary hot plate. That's on, and that's on. I put them both to high. Oops. I missed it. You guys probably saw it on the screen. So the unit shut off at a specific thing. It looks like it's going to reassess and try to kick back on. It cannot. So let me turn off. Let's turn off the hot plate. What I'm doing here is I'm watching the unit self-correct itself. All right, so we're back to the heater, and I'm going to try to just turn on one hot plate, one side of the hot plate, and see where we're at. All right, 2,000. That's where we're at. Everything seems to be moving okay. I'm going to try to turn on the second hot plate. It's rated at 2400, but it should be able to peak at 3800. But one thing I want to make sure is that I actually have that set in the settings before we continue. Okay, so I do have the X boost on. So the X boost is to push about 3800, I think 3400 watts. So if I stay under 3400, it should at least expect that surge because this can surge up to 4800 watts. Let's try turning on the other hot plate on low. We're at 3,000 watts, and it shut down. Okay, so here we are. Test number two. I unplugged the unit from the wall, as you can see here. 
I'm going to turn on the AC unit first. And then I'm going to turn on the heater. I know it's kind of counterproductive running a heater and an AC at the same time, right? Heater's just kicked on. We're at a little under 1600 watts. And this is without it being plugged into the wall. I'm waiting to see the surge from the compressor. As you can see, there's no input. We're running directly off the battery. So what I want to do really quick is throw up the copy of the manual here up on the screen. Because what I've done is I've made a mistake in my calculation in regards to the amperage uh, that the unit can handle via the AC outlet. So basically, the unit is failing due to the fact that I am pushing it beyond its uh, acceptable amperage versus its watts. Okay, so real quick, what did we get from the testing? And I love doing testing because it shows a bit of transparency when you're doing reviews. Uh, something I've never shared, I think, on the channel is uh, a while back I had another unit. It was a 1,500-watt unit, and when it hit failure, the unit just died, and I contacted the, the, the people from that company because I had never worked with them before, and uh, they kind of were like, eh. And I was just like, yeah, I'm never, I, I don't, I, I can never promote your product, you know what I mean? Or talk about your product because I would hate for my uh, viewers to buy something like that. And if it hits failure rate and then it never turns back on, that's just not a good thing. Anyways, uh, most people are not going to push the Delta Max to, to its max capacity like I did. I would love to see if I had additional batteries, uh, how long I can get things to last for, let's say a heater or an air condition. Will it last for 8 hours, 12 hours, 24 hours and longer? Because emergencies can be very uh, unsettling in the aspect that you just never know how long they're going to last. But I noticed with the, which was very impressive, is like the AC ran fine by itself. The heat plate ran fine by itself. The heater ran fine by itself. So independently pushing this unit anywhere from 1500 watts to 2000 watts, it ran smooth with no issues. Uh, so I like that fact that it didn't have it. Another thing that I really liked is the fact that without human intervention, when it hit failure, the unit cycled and kind of fixed itself and kicked back on and tried to, you know, keep everything running smooth. I've never seen a unit do that ever. So I'm very really thoroughly impressed with the Delta II Max. Now, uh, like I said, most folks are going to use a product like this to run a specific dice, like an air conditioner, a freezer, a uh, refrigerator, you know, an air conditioner, you know, those type of products. They're not going to run 16 different products running through this machine all at one time. Uh, I would suggest not doing that with any of your uh, portable power stations. Remember, they are limited to a certain extent of how much power they can push. Uh, I myself have pushed even a generator, a gas generator, beyond its cap capacity just by doing some testing one time. It wasn't a good thing. Um, luckily, it had circuitry to, to do that. But anyways, I'm rambling. Um, so uh, I want to bounce back to the table to wrap this video up because I wanted to ask you guys a couple of questions. Uh, also get your thoughts on you know this testing and what your thoughts were. Uh, what would you like to see? Uh, plus, I know uh, EcoFlow has a tendency to shoot up updates, uh, shoot out updates on their products, which is nice. I've had one, a couple of them on the Wave, a couple of them on the Glacier. I think even on the, the original Delta too. I think I've had a couple updates on that. So we'll see. I think I even had one update on the Delta to uh, I don't know if I had an update on that one yet or not. I think I did. Anyways, they have an update to keeping their products update, which I like that because they anytime there's an issue or a quirk, they try to resolve that issue as fast as possible by shooting an update through the app where you can update the device. So uh, there's some information I want to share, some questions I want to ask, and uh, I'll ramble a little bit more if you guys don't mind. And uh, so let's get back to me at the table and uh, wrap this video up. All right, so I hope that you enjoyed that video. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing it. Um, I'm thoroughly impressed with this unit. And uh, for you folks that stayed to the end, I kind of wanted to let you know, you might want to check down in the description below in this video, there's all kinds of specialized deals that are, you can get by using either my affiliate link or some of the codes that were provided to me where you can save up to 5% uh, on purchases of the unit or bundles. But also there's another aspect in there if you use a specific code that I'll highlight down there where you can get, uh, if you buy the unit, you can get uh, two solar panels, I think 220 watt solar panels for free, which is about an $800 value. 
Um, other than that, to limit my questions to you, my viewers, what are your thoughts on the Delta II Max? Do you feel it's something feasible for emergency preparedness? And how well do you think compare this to other units that you may have experience with? Uh, do you own any other EcoFlow products? Uh, or do you prefer to use a different product? And what type of product is that? Because I'd like to know where you guys stand on certain things. How much power do you feel that you need uh, from a portable power station? Something like this can really come in handy for emergencies, especially some of you folks out there that have medical needs. And I like to always mention this in these videos because people have CPAP machines, people have oxygen uh, machines and all uh, things that they need to cool like insulin. Uh, and the list goes on. So there's a lot of needs to have a portable power station or a power solution in general for emergencies, specifically in states that get hit by a lot of natural disasters. I'm in Florida. We deal with hurricanes and tropical storms and very strong storms that kind of blow through. I know some of you folks out in the Midwest deal with tornadoes. And then some of you folks up north that deal with extreme cold, blizzards, and whatnot. So again, look forward to hearing from you. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you got any value out of this video, hit that thumbs up button. I truly appreciate that. If you're new here, please take the time to subscribe. Uh, it's always uh, very uh, happy to see new people in chats and in the comments section. And I love to read the comments. I try to interact with every single one of you folks out there because I like to keep that conversation going. Other than that, folks, again, this is Gray. I hope you uh, have a great evening, and uh, I'll catch you guys in the rebound. Remember, you are not alone. This is Gray Man. I'm out. I'll see you guys in the rebound, and God bless.